All right, welcome to the lunchtime video. This is my favorite video. So let's just dive right into it and look at where I left off last time. So I will share my second screen. Some of my older videos, I accidentally shared my first screen and now I just have a public uh, YouTube video of me uh, talking over a black screen. Um, but, uh, so I've got that fixed. So where I left off last, I was in the middle of a epic struggle to establish an RSVP neighbor. Um, I had a delivery at my door though. Um, so I had some perishables there. I had to cut it. Uh, I, I suppose I could have just paused it, but, um, uh, it was big order, so I had this like stock my fridge and stuff. So I just wanted to call it a day two. Uh, okay, so yep, here's the lab though. Everything is is up and ready to go. Uh, oops, there we go. So I will open up GNS three. Here we go. So we're just trying to keep this as simple as possible and just establish some RSVP neighbors. So one issue I've been having is I can't get RSVP traffic to go over the interfaces. I don't know why that is the case, but um, I was T-shooting that in the, oops, in the, oh. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, so I was, um, T-shooting that, and um, and uh, had to uh, had to stop in the middle of my T-shooting. So the good news is uh, I might be able to figure out the problem. Oops. Come on, let me do it again. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to work on getting RSVP traffic to flow between R1 and R3. And um, I will um, have a Wireshark capture open while I am doing that so we can tell right away if I have accomplished my goal. Um, of course, there's gonna be a bug that usually happens with GNS where I can't uh, collect the traffic anymore. Okay, so start off with see wh where I got so far. So I have a yeah, I just don't understand uh, why it's not uh, doing it. Oh, well, that could be a reason right there. I'm pretty sure it was zero to zero. I will we'll double check. Uh, yep, it's zero to zero. Ah, so it looks like, let's see here. Oh, so I don't see any problems there. Okay, so that looks more normal. I don't know what happened here. Oh, it looks like I pinged the wrong address. Instead of 1.0, it's 0 0.1. Okay, so we've got our ICMPs going. The problem is that it's not sending out uh, RSVP traffic. So uh, let's do some Google searches.
Okay, I think somebody sneezed out there, but there was a very loud human noise. Um, I think it was a sneeze, but um, I will admit I'm very much on edge because I did actually, um, I didn't witness it with my own eyes, but I, I did witness with my ears a, uh, a murder of a, a man uh, shooting his wife, uh, the wife screams, the police response. So I'm definitely, when I hear a, a noise like that, a little bit on edge. And not only that, there was actually a shooting in Austin and I was a few blocks away from it um, the other night. Um, but uh, the good news is I actually left uh, about a half an hour before the shooting occurred. So I was nowhere near that area while it occurred, but uh, I very could, very easily could have been. So I'm definitely on a little bit of a, a definitely a little bit on edge. Um, so what better way to, um, to, calm down than to do a difficult lab that I don't particularly enjoy. Okay, so hopefully RSVP traffic will flow now. Nope, it could be the bugs, so I'm gonna try. Uh, I suppose I could have just done another ping, but this is not, uh, not the slowest. It's not the fastest, but it's not super slow. And if it, yeah, okay, so, so Definitely 100%. There's still no RSVP uh, traffic being sent. Okay, so if there is no LSP set up, there isn't any RSVP neighborship either. So I must have done some mistake above, or there was some configuration already for these neighborships to be up. Otherwise, there wouldn't, there shouldn't be any neighborship. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, I'm going to need an LSP. Uh, they're not telling me how to do that. See, it's just frustrating to me because it's said that the minimum uh, required configuration was what I have on there. So if it does turn out that there is more than just that that's required, that would be really frustrating to me. For example, if it's required to have IBGP set up, which I would not be surprised if that was a requirement I would just be very frustrated. Okay, ah. Okay, 
So the reason it was not coming, oh, I, I, I'm going to take a quick break because that wasn't a good enough solution here. So uh, I need a, a quick break. I will be back. Okay, I am back. The problem was that I had CS uh, PF enabled. Uh, let's try to use the help apropos to figure out uh, what the problem is with that. So I know I know what this stands for, constraint shortest, shortest path first, but I don't know why it needs to be turned off. Disabling CSPF for bypass LSPs. Under certain circumstances, you might need to disable CSPF computation for bypass LSPs and use the configured explicit route object, ERO, if available. For example, a bypass LSP might need to traverse multiple OSPF areas or ISIS levels. Preventing the CSPF computation from working. To ensure that link and node protection function properly in this case, you have to disable CSPF computation for the bypass LSP. Okay, so I think I understand this really well now. What's happening is um, in order to establish a, a LSP, or sorry, um, in order for uh, there to be ISIS uh, messages, normally it would require the shortest path first calculations from your IGP. But sometimes your IGP doesn't make those calculations. And in this case, um, that would be true. So let's do, so my IGP, show configuration protocols, is gonna be, oh, yeah, well, I don't even have an IGP on here now. I have nothing that will create a shortest path first um, calculation or table. So. Of course, RSVP isn't going to be able to use that, so it just does nothing until I tell it to not require a shortest path first calculation because RSVP cannot do it itself. It relies on a different protocol, um, OSPF, ISIS. So if those aren't configured or if they're configured but they don't require uh, a, a shortest path first uh, calculation or that calculation is across multiple areas and not uh, uh, not all encompassing of the, uh, or, or if, it, yeah, if it fits across multiple areas and then you have separate LSP or your separate uh, SPF calculations per area, as you will, RSVP can't uh, communicate uh, across those areas because it, it requires that uh, shortest path uh, calculation. So it will only have it for, for one area it will be missing from the, the other side of the LSP. So the best solution, um, in my opinion, is to just disable it every single time. But uh, there are going to be situations where it will be beneficial. Um, but those situations are going to be pretty specific. It's if your endpoint on your LSP um, are in a area that is running OSPF or ISIS and uh, your endpoints are confined within that area. That's the only time CSPF um, can be enabled. Okay, so I'm kind of upset that the um, documentation I'm using didn't talk about that, um, but it's not the worst thing in the world um, because it is true that this is the minimum configuration required. 
but it is not true that you can only have this configuration. You also need a configuration that makes a shortest path first calculation. So if you have this minimum configuration, this assumes that you also have configuration uh, such as OSPF or ISIS, which I did not. So I had to disable the requirement for a uh, SPF table or, or data. Okay, but now I'm, I'm good to go. So um, let's uh, keep going here. We will uh, set up a label switch path from router run one to router seven. Oops, I still don't have my circuit connections. Um, and I do have, oh, okay, because I don't have it. Okay, sweet. So let's, um, yeah, so let's add that uh, configuration to all the routers. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm tempted. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take the easy way out for now and uh, just test it. Ah, God damn it. Oh, that's interesting. So it looks like the LSP is up. Um, I think the problem is I'm thinking it's a L2 circuit, but it, it's not an L2 circuit. It's a, um, it's something else. Yeah, so it's not an L2 circuit connection. Uh, for some reason, it is an MPLS. LSP, those are two different things. Okay, so let's uh, do it uh, more by the book. Oh, just let me just growl like my crazy. Oh, we will need to get this. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, so we do have uh, the presence of RSVP signal LSPs. Okay, so everything is, is working fine. Let's try uh, tunneling now. I guess I am. Never mind. Let, let's 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 let's. So it is twelve twenty three right now. I can go and tell one so i'm going to pad out this time a little bit more by getting rid of this Okay, so this looks good. Um, hmm, okay, all right. So let's uh, visual configuration. Let's just set that no more. And we'll do a private. 
do Okay, so this is the minimum configuration that is uh, required. Um, I don't even think we'll need an IP address. We're only going to need that on the endpoints. Okay, so it'll be a really stripped down basic configuration. Should have no problem getting this done by um the end of the lunch hour and i do have a, a meeting today so assuming it is thursday i have no idea what time it is oh or what day it is i mean um yep so it's thursday today so i should have no problem uh oh, oh sorry so so i need to uh i need to to end it uh, a little bit earlier um Okay, well, I should have more than, uh... oh, right, I, I deleted everything. Um, I need this as well. Perfect, okay. So this is the extent of the configuration required on my transit routers. I'm also going to have endpoint routers. They're going to require another piece of information or another piece of configuration. They're going to require the LSP configuration, which I don't have the, on there now. Uh, that's totally fine. And they'll require an IP address. Um, the IP address, I think I will have on the loopback interface. So I will change the configuration here. All right, then add this back. Okay, and now delete. Okay, everything uh, is perfect. Uh, we are missing the um, configuration required to set up an LSP, but that's not gonna be super important right now. Um, so I'll just commit it and then we'll go back and set up the LSP and then we'll set up the tunneling. Hopefully I can get that all done by the end of this video. Okay, so we're just gonna need these. Uh, okay, so let's go to router. Okay, so we're going to do uh, one, two, and nine. Perfect. Yep. 
Yeah, so all of these routers will require uh, no CSPF as well. Um, the only time I'm not going to need that, as I said, is if I have an IGP that makes SPF calculations. Uh, I could test that theory, make that really drive home. Um, I'm kind of tempted to do that, but uh, that would require um, more, uh, well, for, uh, for, I mean, that would require more configuration. And the point of what I'm doing now is to just keep things as simple as possible. Especially since I've only got this lunch hour here, it's already halfway over. Okay, so it's going to be zero, one, and nine. Okay, on to the next one. Stuck is rolling. All right, this is going to be one, two, and nine. My weight's like super up though, so I don't know if I want to. I guess I got to be smart about what I eat. Get rid of the hunger, but I eat too much. Still have a calorie deficit without uh, remaining super hungry. That that is very difficult. And I am not good with hunger at all. I typically just eat if I'm hungry, which is why I often struggle with weight. But let's keep focused. Now I'm really starting to lose my focus. So, okay, so this is gonna be just uh, zero and one. Okay, so now uh, we've got everything set up to allow for a LSP. So let's set that up. Um, okay. So set interface hello zero family. Oh, right, unit zero family inet address. Let's go uh, 10. Dot 1.1.1, one one. we'll do a slash eight. And then we'll do a set protocols and PLS, uh, uh, oops. Uh, label switch path. Uh, and then we're going to call it uh, RSVP path. To ten dot two dot two dot two. Commit and quit. Okay. Oh, right, I've got to give it a name. 
Okay, so the name is going to be. Oh, right, okay. Okay, so hopefully things are good to go. I uh, might not have an L2 circuit connection, but I don't think I'll need one. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is show route table inats.3. Oops, and it looks like there's some problems here. Um, let's do show ls lsp. Oh, we got one down. Show RSVP neighbors. Ah, so we're not getting an RSVP neighbor. Last time, the, the reason I didn't get that is because I didn't have this no CSPF command. So let's make sure both of these have that. Okay, so that is interesting. I was not expecting that at all. Yeah, I was just not expecting that. Um, why don't I try shutting down one of those links? Um, maybe it's because it's got dual links. So let's set interface. Okay. What the heck? That makes no sense. Uh, okay, so that didn't do anything. Uh, Okay, well, of course, you know, what I'm going to do is, uh, is sniff. That's the natural thing to do. So, yep, it's not capturing anymore. We'll restart it. Just focus on this top link here. Now I'm willing to bet there's no RSVP traffic anymore. If there is, I will be surprised. Okay, so there is there is no RSVP traffic anymore. So I think I'm going to try. Now I might have lied earlier because earlier I said RSVP is not capable of making an SPF calculation. That might not be true. It might be capable of that. It's just the topology uh, point to point didn't require for it. Now that we've got a more complex topology with multiple routers with RSVP and MPLS, uh, it might be capable of making a SPF calculation. So we might require uh, that to be turned on now. All right, that's not the problem. So there's a really strange problem now. Um, it is very unclear when uh, RSVP messages will be sent out and when they will not. Um, it does not seem like it's uh, consistent one way or the other. Um, I guess what I'm curious about trying and maybe, ah, I wonder if, if my, so let me see here, private set protocols, zero units. Oops. Ah, not protocols. But I don't see why that would make a difference for the, uh, 
RSVP neighborship. I mean, maybe it makes it so that it can't, well, I, I don't know. Let's see here. Okay, so let's see. Okay, let's check the neighbors here. Ah, there's like huge um, wasp jumps on. All right, so nothing. Um, for some reason, it's it's just not uh, it's just not working anymore. Um, I don't know why. Um, and it's um, it's obviously kind of frustrating. Um, let's go back to the help apropos because that documentation I thought was really good. Um, so I, I think I do that on this one. Yeah. So I read it here and made it pretty clear. Um, oh, I don't think I finished reading it though. So you can disable S, S, C, S, P, F computation for all bypass LSPs or for specific bypass LSPs to disable S. Okay, so yeah, well, there's a reason I didn't read the rest of that. Let me read again what this is. Under certain circumstances, you might need to disable S uh, computation for bypass LSPs and use the, if available, for example, a bypass LSP might need to traverse. Let's take a look at bypass. Oops. Perfect. Okay, so this I think will be better. Configuring bypass LSPs, you can configure specific bandwidth and the path restraints for a bypass LSP. You can also individually configure each bypass LSP generated when you enable multiple bypass LSPs. If you do not configure the bypass LSPs individually, they all share the same path and bandwidth constraints, if any. If you specify the bandwidth, hop limit, and path statements for the bypass LSP, these values take precedence over the values configured at the edit protocols, RSVP interface, interface name, link protection hierarchy level, the other attributes, subscription, no node protection, and optimized timer are inherited from the general constraints. To configure a bypass LSP, include the bypass statement. Oh, God. You can include this statement at the following hierarchy levels. Configuring the next hop or next, next hop node address for bypass LSPs. If you configure a bypass LSP, you must also configure the to statement. The to statement specifies the address for the interface of the immediate next hop node for link protection or the next next hop node for node link protection. The address specified determines whether this is a link protection bypass or a link node protection bypass on multi-access networks. For example, a LAN, this address is also used to specify which next hop node is being protected. Okay, so one thing I did, um, I do remember from before when it was working, is that I did have an IP address um, between the two uh, routers. So I think I'm going to try that and see if I can get uh, RSVP traffic. Oh. 
Okay, so here's here we go. So let's see if I get RSVP traffic. If I re-enable uh, no CSPF and I pin up IP addresses on the ports. Okay, so um, Okay, so, oh, no, this is still capturing. What the ever-loving heck? Okay, so this is the same configuration I had. Um, but the, yeah, but the difference is that there's now no RSVP messages. Oh, okay. I signed up for spam, so now I get spam. Uh. So why is there not? Ah. So the the ICMP messages are going across, so there's no issues with connectivity, like one side is down or anything like that. The problem is this here. I wonder if I uh, bounce the port. Why is it not sending RSVP messages anymore? And why was it sending them before? I don't think I had um, a difference between my configs. 
So I, I'd be interested, I think this is a video I'm gonna have to go back and, and watch because I didn't do anything. Okay, this looks promising. Configuring RSVP and MPLS. The primary purpose of the Junos RSVP software is to support dynamic signaling within label switched paths, LSPs. When you enable both MPLS and RSVP on a router, MPLS becomes a client of RSVP. No additional configuration is required to bind MPLS and RSVP. You can configure MPLS to set up signal paths by using the label switch path statement at the edit protocols MPLS hierarchy level. Each LSP translates into a request for RSVP to initiate an RSVP session. This request is passed through the internal interface between label switching and RSVP. After examining the request information, checking RSVP states, and checking the local routing tables, RSVP initiates one session for each LSP. The session is sourced from the local router and is destined for the target of the LSP. When an RSVP session is successfully created, the LSP is set up along the paths created by the RSVP session. If the RSVP session is unsuccessful, RSVP notifies MPLS of its status. It is up to MPLS to initiate backup paths or continue retrying the initial path. To pass label switching signaling information, RSVP supports four additional objects, label request object, label object explicit route object, and route record object. For an LSP to be set up successfully, all routers along the path must support MPLS, RSVP, and the four objects. The, of the four objects, the route record object is not mandatory. To configure MPLS and make it a client of RSVP, do the following. Enable MPLS on all routers that will participate in the label switching, that is on all routers that might be a part of label switching path. Enable RSVP on all routers and on all router interfaces that form the LSP. Configure the routers at the beginning of the LSP. I did all of this and it didn't work. See, this is what's kind of frustrating because it's, it's not 
telling me the whole picture. Okay, so I'm actually going to need to probably go back and rewatch this video that I'm making now <laughs> because I have no idea how I got it to work and uh, I, I just want to see that config and compare it to uh, to other kinds of config. So I'm going to need to stop the video now and then I'll start the next video by uh, watching this video. All right, so thanks for watching. See you in the next one.